All right, hey, this is John Summerman with the Active Towns Initiative here in Austin, Texas, and I am going to do a quick little ride to the grocery store as an evaluation of how comfortable uh, that route is. Okay, and beginning uh, that trip to the grocery store from the house there, and this is Oxford Avenue, a very short block, one block segment here. It is a, a very quiet, residential street, as you can probably tell already. Frequently used for dog walkers and families riding bikes in the neighborhood. We'll be taking a left on Dyer here. Nice squirrel running across the road. And we come up to Garner. We'll be turning right. And again, uh, this particular neighborhood was platted in the 1930s. Most of these houses were built in the mid 1940s. As you can already tell, all the streets in this area, in this neighborhood, are without bicycle facilities and without sidewalks. And in the mornings and the evenings, there are many people out walking and biking. In the distance, you might be able to see that there's a parent and a child riding. We will more than likely catch up to them. And from a comfort perspective, since that's what we're evaluating, this uh, tends to be a very comfortable environment. Post COVID-19, uh, the number of people in the neighborhood walking and biking in this area has uh, probably quadrupled. And that has helped really re-emphasize to the motoring public in the area that in fact, this is a normal route for families to be out riding bikes. The era of these homes is a little bit older, probably dating back to the 1920s, 19-teens. Some historic homes, a few of them. Nowhere near as old, obviously, as my European friends. But for North America, this is pretty old, pretty historic. And we're gonna come up here. You can actually get a nice view of the downtown from this precipice. And we're gonna come up to Barton Boulevard here. And we're gonna be taking a right. And now we're coming up on our notoriously busy Barton Springs Road. It can be busy at times. So depending on the time of day, I might choose to go across at the crosswalk here to try to get to the trail. Most likely they're heading to the trail. Because I know that it's a weekend day, the trail is probably quite crowded with many, many people walking, biking, running. And so we're gonna take a paved route instead of going out onto the natural surface trail. But again, a relatively quiet route, a known quiet residential street. There's lots of apartments and condominiums in this particular area, as well as some restaurants. And for the most part, motor vehicle drivers are pretty courteous and expect to see people riding bikes in this particular area, as well as pedestrians. Clearly the biggest challenge is motor vehicle drivers not familiar or unfamiliar with the area they may not know that they're going to be encountering a bunch of uh, people walking, biking. Off to the left here, you'll see a sidewalk. This was recently put in within the last four years. Previously, there was no sidewalk there. It used to feature a beaten path, a desire line through the grass, which helped the city understand that there was a need.
and we're coming up on a trail crossing. So to the right, you'll see that there's a natural surface trail and a trail crossing here. We're gonna take this trail crossing. And again, normally on the weekend, I would not drop down to the lower level of the trail, simply because there's so many cyclists uh, and pedestrians. Pedestrians will probably outnumber the cyclists uh, 10 to one down there on the trail near the water. So we're going to actually stay away from that, which means that we are not going to be able to take the bypass underneath the busy street, Lamar. Now this particular intersection, which is Riverside and Lamar, South Lamar, will feature in the next couple of years a protected cycle track intersection. So we'll have a protected intersection up here at some point in the future. Okay, we should be getting an indication. It looks like the left turning motor vehicles uh, behind me and off to the right got priority. If there are no vehicles waiting in that left turn lane, we would have received priority. Now you can see we're on a bicycle and pedestrian only bridge, making our way across Lady Bird Lake, which is a dammed up river, the Colorado River here in Austin, Texas. And yes, you can see that we have scooters, lots of scooters. section that last week I sort of talked about how post COVID this area has been pretty comfortable not as many motor vehicles as before in a pre COVID era this could be if you were here during rush hour traffic you could have many many motor vehicle drivers some of them being quite impatient another little shared street area taking right on this little uh, side area of Lamar Boulevard. Actual Lamar Boulevard is down below. This little segment is a shared space on the right-hand side of the road and a contraflow bike lane on the left-hand side. Very, very low traffic counts, especially compared to Lamar Boulevard proper, just to our left. And our destination is just ahead. And we are going to sort of blend in with traffic, make our, our turn here into our destination. And even though we're evaluating this particular trip based on comfort, I'm also gonna go in and do some grocery shopping. There's my little uh, parking spot. And yes, that's a People for Bikes sticker on that uh, bike rack. I wonder how that got there. Cheers. Okay, I'll try to navigate here the, uh, the bypass which is just slightly more length, just a little less direct, but at the same time, gives us a much safer route in the sense that we don't have to cross a major intersection of South Lamar at Riverside, as I indicated uh, on the way to the grocery store. This is on the way back, by the way. 
I'm gonna try to go slow because I know this is an intense environment with pedestrians on the weekends. So we'll try to keep our speeds less threatening to pedestrians. Lots of dog walkers too. And there, we've bypassed that busy street. A four to five lane major arterial corridor. And now we're down on the trail next to the lake. And then we'll climb back up to where we were before, passing by the ball fields at the park. That's what the ramp looks like heading down to the trail. And we can see some folks bringing their kayaks down to get to the water.